he can make a way. Hey, hey, so humble yourselves and pray and guard his Torah. Obey each day. Moshe said, Hear, O Yisrael, Yahweh your Elohim, Yahweh is one, and you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your might. And these words which I am commanding you today shall be in your heart, and you shall impress them upon your children, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up, and shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom to everyone worshiping with us at home. It's a blessing to be here today. It's a beautiful Sabbath day, amen. <clears throat> the name of the message today is called, In the Beginning, Golden Calf Created. Oh, I saw some eyebrows go up. That sounds like a strange name for a message about Yahweh, doesn't it? You know? A message about Yahweh where it intentionally connects the first verse in the, in the, uh, in the scripture, uh, in Bear Seed in Genesis 1 1, with an object of idolatry that, that resulted in Moshe breaking the first two tablets, that also resulted in the Levites getting the priesthood, because they killed about 3,000 men by the sword who had participated in the worship of that golden calf while Moshe was getting instructions from Yahweh. That sounds kind of strange, doesn't it? <clears throat> In the beginning, golden calf created the heavens and the earth. It actually sounds blasphemous, doesn't it? To be honest, it makes me uncomfortable to say it. It, it may even make you feel uncomfortable to hear it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <clears throat> In the beginning, golden calf created the heavens and the earth. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's really not so strange. As a matter of fact, it's quite common, popular even. Now, I want you to notice that I did not say, in the beginning, Zeus or Odin or Vishnu or Apollo, or, or any of the light created the heavens and the earth. And that was not simply an oversight on my part. <clears throat> There's a reason for it. You see, Zeus and Odin and Vishnu and Apollo, etc., cetera, are, are not recorded in the Scripture as mighty ones that Yisrael engaged in worship in. Okay? They are no less a vanity, and though Israel may have worshipped them in all the places where they were scattered, they aren't mentioned as being worshipped in the Scripture by Israel. But the golden calf, on the other hand, is on the other hand. All right, turn with me to uh, Exodus nineteen. <coughs> Be a little short, little short jump. Thank you. We're going to be on page 77 in the 1998 ISR translation of the scriptures. And we're going to start reading in verse 3. And it says, And Moshe went up to Elohim, and Yahweh called to him from the mountain, saying, This is what you say to the house of Yaakov, and declare to the children of Israel." You have seen what I did to the Mitzrites and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. And now, if you diligently obey my voice and shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession above all the peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a reign of priests and a set-apart nation. <clears throat> Those are the words which you are to speak to the children of Israel. And Moshe, that'd be Moses, came and called for the elders of the people and set before them all these words which Yahweh commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, 
all that Yahweh has spoken, what are those next three words? We shall do. So Moshe brought back the words of the people to Yahweh. All right, now, for the next four chapters, uh, we read the commands that, that Yahweh is giving to Yisrael, of which they said that they would do all of it. All right, I mean, all right, part of which is the following. Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. You do not make for yourself a carved image, or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing kindness to thousands to those who love me and guard my commands." You do not bring the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, to naught, for Yahweh does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught. Okay, now we're going to look at two or three scriptures right here. Exodus 23 and verse 13 says, And in all that I have said to you, take heed and make no mention of the name of other mighty ones. Let it not be heard from your mouth. All right? And then 24, verse 3, it starts. And it says, And Moshe came and related to the people all the words of Yahweh and all the right rulings. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Yahweh has spoken we shall do. And Moshe wrote down all the words of Yahweh and rose up early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve standing columns for the twelve tribes of Yisrael. And he sent young men of the children of Yisrael, and they offered burnt offerings and slaughtered peace offerings of bulls to Yahweh. And Moshe took half the blood and put it in basins, and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant, and he read in the hearing of the people, and they said... All that Yahweh has spoken, we shall do and obey. So then Yahweh calls Moshe back up on the mountain. And in the meantime, on the other hand, okay, Exodus 32, and we're going to start reading in verse 1, on the other hand. And when the people saw that Moshe was so long and coming down the mountain, the people gathered together to Aharon and said to him, Arise, make us mighty ones. And that that word there is Elohim. Make us Elohim. Who go before us. For this Moshe, the man who brought us up out of the land of Mitzrayim, we do not know what has become of him. And Aharon said to them, Take off the golden earrings which are in in the ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. And all the people took off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aharon. And he took this from their hand and he formed it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. And they said, This is your Mighty one, O Yisrael, that brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Aharon saw and built an altar before it. And Aharon called out and said, Tomorrow is a festival to Yahweh. All right. So we see here that they're not only bringing the name of Yahweh to naught, but they're assigning this to a filthy idol and are bowing down to the idol. Verse 6. And I've got to say, if, if, if this golden calf is their mighty one that bought them out of Mitzrayim, that's also kind of akin to saying the golden calf created. Amen? Verse 6. And they rose early on the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Go get down, 
For your people whom you brought out of the land of Mitzrayim have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf and have bowed themselves to it and slaughtered to it and said, This is your mighty one, O Yisrael, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Yahweh said to Moshe, I have seen this people and see it is a stiff-necked people. And now let me alone that my wrath might burn against them and I consume them and I make of you a great nation. But Moshe pleaded with Yahweh, his Elohim, and said, Yahweh, why does your wrath burn against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Mitzrayim with great power and with a strong hand? Why should the Mitzrites speak and say, for, for evil he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from the heat of your wrath and relent from this evil to your people. Remember Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yisrael, your servants, to whom you swore by yourself and said to them, I increase your seed like the stars of the heavens. And all this land that I have spoken of, I give to your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And Yahweh relented from the evil which he had which he said he would do to his people. And Moshe turned and went down from the mountain, and in his hand were two tablets of the witness, tablets written on both their sides, written on the one side and on the other. And the tablets were the work of Elohim, and the writing was the writing of Elohim engraved on the tablets. And Yehoshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, and he said to Moshe, a noise of battle in the camp. But he said, It is not the sound of those who shout of might, nor is it the sound of those who cry out in weakness, but the sound of singing that I hear. And it came to be as soon as he came near the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moshe's displeasure burned, and he threw the tablets out of his hand and broke them at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf, which they had made, and burned it in the fire and ground it into powder and scattered it on the face of the water and made the children of Yisrael drink it. And Moshe said to Aharon, What did this people do to you that you have brought so great a sin upon them? And Aharon said, Do not let your displeasure, the displeasure of my master, burn. You know the people that it is an, it's an evil. And they said to me, Make us mighty ones who go before us. For this Moshe, the man who brought us out of the land of Mitzrayim, we do not know what has become of him. And I said to them, Whoever has gold, let them take it off. And they gave it to me, and I threw it in the fire, and this calf came out. And Moshe saw the people were let loose, for Aharon had let them loose to their shame among their enemies. And Moshe stood in the entrance of the camp and said, who is for Yahweh come to me? And all the sons of Lewi, that be Levi, gathered themselves to him. And he said to them, Thus said Yahweh Elohim of Yisrael, Each one put his sword on his side, pass over to and fro from gate to gate in the camp, and each one slay his brother, and each one his friend, and each one his relative. And the sons of Lewi did according to the word of Moshe, and about 3,000 men of the people fell that day. And Moshe said, you are ordained for Yahweh today since each one has been against his son and his brother so has to bring upon you a blessing today. And it came to be on the next day that Moshe said to the people, you, you have sinned a great sin and now I am going up to Yahweh if I might atone for your sin. And Moshe returned to Yahweh and said, oh, these people have sinned a great sin and have made for themselves a mighty one of gold. And now, if you would forgive their sin, but if not, please blot me out of your book which you have written. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Whoever has sinned against me, I blot him out of my book. And now, go lead the people to the place which I have spoken to you. See, my messenger goes before you, and in the day of my visitation, I shall visit their sin upon them. And Yahweh plagued the people because they had made the calf which Aharon made. So what do we think? Is, is Yahweh okay with giving the esteem of his name to another mighty one? Don't think so? If he's not good with attaching his name to a filthy idol, do you suppose that he would be any less annoyed 
if we assign the name of a filthy idol to him. You don't think so? Makes makes no sense. Isaiah 42. We're going to read one verse here. Isaiah 42. And I'll tell you what the verse is when we get there. We're going to be on page uh, 446. Isaiah 42 and verse 8. I am Yahweh, that is my name. And my esteem I do not give to another. Now I'm going I'm to interrupt myself here just a minute. My esteem I do not give to another what? Well, the subject thus far has been his name, right? I do not give my esteem to another name, nor my praise to idols. Okay? Isaiah 65. I'm going to start reading in verse 1. We're going to be on page 463. Isaiah 65 and verse 1. This is a really strong chapter right here because for one thing, this is this is future, this is future prophecy, some of the stuff that, that we're reading. Oh, not right here to start with, but uh, it picks up in just a bit. But Yahweh says, I have let myself be inquired of, not by those who asked. I was found not by those who sought me. I said, Here I am, here I am to a nation, not what? Calling on my name. I have held out my hands all day long to a stubborn people who walk in a way that is not good after their own thoughts. The people who provoke me continually to my face who slaughter in gardens and burn incense on altars of brick, who sit among the graves and spend the night in secret places, who eat the flesh of pigs and the broth of unclean meat is in their pots, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me for I am set apart to you. These are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day. See, it is written before me, I am not silent, but shall repay, and I shall repay into their bosom your crookednesses and the crookednesses of your fathers together, said Yahweh, who burned incense on the mountains and uh, and reproached me on the hills. And I shall measure their former work into their bosom. Thus said Yahweh, As the new wine is found in the cluster, and one shall say, Do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I do for my servant's sake not to destroy them all. And I shall bring forth, I I shall bring forth a seed from Yaakov and from Yehuda, an heir of my mountains, and my chosen ones shall inherit it, and my servants dwell there, and Sharon shall be a fold of flocks and the valley of Accor, a place for herds to lie down. For my people who sought me, but you are those who forsake Yahweh, who forget my set-apart mountain, who prepare a table for God, and who fill a drink offering for me. Okay, now I want to stop for just a minute there and talk about this uh, uh, God fellow here. Now some people are going to say that's pronounced Gad, but it's not. And it doesn't matter if it is or not. And I'll, and I'll explain why in a second. If we look uh, up Strong's 1408, it's a variation of 1409, and it says, Fortune, a Babylonian deity. Okay? And I remind you that what comes after the dash in the, in the definition of Strong's is not the definition. It's how it's translated in the KJV. So when the fellows put it up on the, on the screen, you'll be able to see that. Brown Drivers Briggs says, God equals God of fortune a Babylonian deity. And then this other, this other person here, Mani, from 4487, the apportioner, that is fate as an idol. And Brown Drivers Briggs says Mani equals fate or fortune. Number one, God of faith who, um, fate who the Jews worshipped in Babylonia. Okay, now, as I was saying a while ago, some people might say foul, That's spelled G-A-D. And we pronounce it Gad. 
not God. And cry foul you may. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that, first of all, in Hebrew, your vowels are the same as they are in Spanish. They are ah, a, e, o, u. Okay? And G-A-D is pronounced, the A in G-A-D is ah. It's an ah sound. And the word is pronounced the same as we pronounce G-O-D. It's God. Right? But you know what? It doesn't matter whether you say potato or potato. We all know that it's still talking about the same thing that tater tots are made from. Oh, man. Right. It's, it's talking about the same thing tater tots are made from. And people will look at the, the, the four letters of the tetragrammaton. And they will come up with different pronunciations for the tetragrammaton. Some will say Yahweh. Some will look at it and insist that it's Yahweh. Some will look at it and say that it's supposed to be Yahuwah. Some will say it's supposed to be Yehovah. But it doesn't, it doesn't change to whom the name is associated, does it? And it doesn't change the idol to whom, and it doesn't matter whether you say God, Gad, Goat, or Good. Any one of those pronunciations, it doesn't change the idol to whom they're associated with. Right? Isaiah 65, 12. And I shall allot to you to the sword and let you all bow down to the slaughter because I called and you did not answer. I spoke and you did not hear and you did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I did not delight. Therefore, thus said the master Yahweh, see, my servants eat, but you hunger. See, my servants drink, but you thirst. See, my servants rejoice, but you are put to shame. See, my servants sing for joy of heart, but you cry for sorrow of heart and wail for breaking of spirit. So, we see here that uh, G-A-D, which is pronounced God, is a deity with whom Yisrael did whore. That's one of the differences between this fellow and the others that I mentioned at the beginning of the sermon. All right? And Yahweh did not like it. Can I get an amen? All right? Yahweh did not like it. Now, just like he did not like the golden calf or Moloch or Tammuz or Baal or any other idol with which Yisrael hoard. All right? So we need to ask this regarding the most sovereign of the universe. Since Yahweh would not like to be called golden calf or by the names Moloch or Baal or Tammuz, etc., would it be wise to consider that he most likely would not like to be called by the name of another deity named God? Would it be foolish to presume that he does like it? Sometimes people will retort with this one, though. But one of the tribes was named God. One of the tribes was named God. What do you got to say about that, Stan? Well, first of all, Leah was a pagan. And so was Rachel. She sold her father's house idols. And quite honestly, Jacob's whole family were idolaters. Seems to be because before they went into uh, Canaan, land of Canaan, Yaakov said, give me all your house idols. Buried them under the terebinth tree before they went in. Genesis 35. Bereshit 35. We're going to start reading in verse 1. Take a look at this. Bereshit 35, verse 1. And Elohim said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make an altar there to El, who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. And Jacob said to his household, and to all who were with him, Put away your foreign mighty ones that are among you, and cleanse yourselves, and change your garments. And let us arise, and go up to Bethel, and let me make there an altar to El, who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Yaakov all the foreign mighty ones which were in their hands 
and all their earrings, which were in their ears, and Yaakov hid them under the terebinth tree, which was near Shechem. All right. So, with that being the case, is it really not so strange that a pagan girl would give her son a pagan name? It's not much different than someone naming their kid Lucky. Anybody ever known somebody named Lucky? Yeah. But don't forget, there's this one also. One of the 12 tribes is called Asher too. Do we therefore conclude based on this same line of logic that it's acceptable to call Yahweh instead of our Elohim, our Asherim? Look at Deuteronomy chapter 12. Now, Asher means joy. But we're talking about the personification of something here. Deuteronomy uh, chapter 12, we're going to start reading in verse 1 on page 198. <laughs> These are the laws and the right rulings which you guard to do in the land which Yahweh Elohim of your fathers is giving you to possess all the days that you live on the soil. Completely destroy all the places where the nations which you are dispossessing serve their mighty ones on the high mountains and on the hills and under every green tree, and you shall break down their altars and smash their pillars and burn their asherim with fi their what? Their asherim with fire, and you shall cut down the carved images of their mighty ones and shall destroy their what? Name out of that place. Yeah, I just don't think because a couple of uh, a, a pagan girls named their sons this thing or that, that that necessarily cleans it up and somehow makes it acceptable to call Yahweh by those names. Right? You see, there's nowhere in the Hebrew or the Greek or the Aramaic at all where Yahweh is referred to as God. So if it's not a name that he's ever referred to in any of those languages, why is there all of this affection for it? A lot of affection for it, right? Because just like the golden calf, man continues to try to make Elohim in his own image. All right? So let, let's look at a few passages together. Um, Exodus 23, 13 is just one verse. I'll read it to you. And it says, And all that I have said to you, take heed and make no mention of the name of other mighty ones and let it not be heard from your mouth. We read that one earlier. Zechariah chapter 13. Zechariah 13. I'm going to start reading verse 1. We're going to be on page 641. Zechariah 13, verse 1. In that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of Dawid, that'd be David, and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Jerusalem, for sin and for uncleanliness. And it shall be in that day, declares Yahweh of hosts, that I cut, I cut off the names of the idols. Do you see that? I cut off the names of the idols from the earth and they shall be remembered no more, and I shall also remove the prophets and unclean spirit from the earth. And it shall be, when one prophesies again, then his father and mother who brought him forth shall say to him, you shall not live because you have spoken falsehood in the name of Yahweh, and his father and mother who brought him forth shall pierce him through when he prophesies. And it shall be in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his vision when he prophesies and not put a hairy robe on in order to deceive, but shall say, I am no prophet. I am a farmer. For a man sold me as a slave in my youth. And one shall say to him, what are these wounds in your hands? And he shall say, because I was wounded at home by those who love me. O oh, sword, Awake against my shepherd, against the man who is my companion, declares Yahweh of hosts. Smite the shepherd and let the sheep be scattered, but I shall turn my hand upon the little ones and it shall be throughout. All the soil declares Yahweh that two-thirds therein are cut off and die and one-third is 
left therein. And I shall bring the third into fire and refine them as silver is refined and try them as gold is tried. And they shall call on my name and I shall answer them and I shall say, this is my people while they say what? Yahweh is my Elohim. Second Chronicles chapter 7. We're going to be on page 882. This is, this is one that you see in a lot of people's yards. I see it at the doctor's offices. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 12. And Yahweh appeared to Shalomo by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of slaughtering. And if I shut up the heavens and there is no rain, or if I command the locust to devour the land and I send pestilence among my people, and my people upon whom my name is called shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their evil ways, then I shall hear from the heavens and forgive their sin and heal their land. On whose name are the people called? The people of God? No, the people of Yahweh. All right. Um, Joshua chapter 24. Page 249. Actually, it's going to be 250 because we're going to start reading in verse 14. Joshua 24, verse 14. And now, fear Yahweh, serve Him in perfection and in truth, and put away the mighty ones which your father served beyond the river and in midstream and serve Yahweh. And if it seems right in your eyes to serve Yahweh, choose for yourself this day whom you are going to serve, whether the mighty ones which your father served that were beyond the river or the mighty ones of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But I and my house, we serve Yahweh. Exodus 33. Shemot chapter 33. We are going to be on page 94. Exodus 33, verse 17. I think, I think this is interesting, what we're going to read here. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Even this word you have spoken, I shall do for you, and uh, for you have found favor in my eyes, and I know you by name. Then he said, Please show me your esteem. And he said, I shall cause my goodness to pass before you, and I shall proclaim the name Yahweh before you. Note that when Moshe asked to see Yahweh's esteem, Yahweh did not say, and I'll show you the grandeur of my creation or the expanse of the heavens or the vastness of my kingdom. He said, I shall cause my goodness to pass before you and shall proclaim the name Yahweh. Just wondering, do you think that perhaps he associates his esteem with his name? And I shall favor him whom I favor, and I shall have compassion on whom I have compassion. But he said, you're unable to see my face, for no one does see me and live. And Yahweh said, see, there is a place with me, and I shall stand you on a rock, and I shall, and it shall be while my esteem passes by that I shall put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand while I pass by and then I shall take away my hand and you shall see my back but my face shall not be seen all right 34 verse 1 and Yahweh said to Moshe 
cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I shall write on these tablets the words which were on the first tablets, which you broke, and be ready in the morning. Then you shall come up in, uh, in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. And let no man come up with you, and let no man be seen in all the mountain, and let not even the flock or the herd feed in front of the mountain. And he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, and then Moshe rose early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai as Yahweh had commanded him, and he took two tablets of stone in his hand. And Yahweh came down in the cloud and stood with him there, and now notice what he did. He proclaimed the name Yahweh. And, and this is not just me reading something into it here. And Yahweh passed before him and proclaimed, Yahweh, Yahweh. Do you know that when in, in Hebrew, that when something is said twice, it means it's got extra importance? Right. Yahweh, Yahweh, an L compassionate and showing favor, patient and great in kindness and truth, watching over kindness for thousands, forgiving crookedness and transgression and sin, but by no means leaving unpunished visiting the crookedness of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. I, I would have to say, yes, he does associate his esteem with his name. Amen? Right. Now, the next passage that we're going to look at is we're going to look to John chapter 17, Yochanan. We're going to be on page uh, 1041. John 17, verse 1, and it says, Yahshua said these words and lifted up his eyes to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Esteem your son so that your son also might esteem you as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give everlasting life to all whom you have given me. And this is everlasting life that they should know you, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua, Messiah, whom you have sent. I have esteemed you on the earth, having accomplished the work you have given me that I should do. And now, esteem me yourself, Father, with the esteem which I had with you before the world was. I have revealed your name to the men whom you gave to me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have guarded your word. Now, there's a footnote in the old IS, the 98 ISR here that says Psalm 138.2. Let's, let's take a look at that and see what that says right quick. Uh, Psalm 138, we're on, going to be on page 722. Psalm 138, starting in verse 1, it says, I give you thanks with all my heart. Before the mighty ones I sing praises to you. I bow myself towards your set-apart Hekhal, that'd be the temple, uh, and give thanks to your name for your kindness and your truth, for you have made great your word, your name above all. All right? Now, See, in Yahshua's day, they were living under a corrupt religious system that would not even allow the name of Yahweh to be pronounced. Do you realize what an honor it would be for Yahshua to reveal the name of the Father to His taught ones? If He's revealed that to you, do you realize what an honor that is to you too? That makes you a special group of people. And if he's revealing it to you now, that makes you part of a special group of people. And would we then make that vain by giving the esteem of Yahweh to the names of another mighty one? 
You know the old adage, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's what? It's still a pig. It's still a pig. And no matter how much you want, might want to clean it up, God is the name of an idol, which Yahweh hates. All right? Exodus 27 says, you know this, when I'm, we've already read it before. You do not bring the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, to naught, for Yahweh does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught. You see, you can't call Yahweh by the name of a pagan deity and keep this commandment. You can't do it. You're making vain his name if you can do that. You're saying it doesn't matter. No, in the beginning, neither golden calf nor God nor any other mighty one did anything. Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And who was that Elohim? Well, turn with me to Isaiah 42, and we'll conclude here. Yeshayahu 42. We're going to start reading on verse 5 in page 446. And I ask the question again because sometimes our minds wander when, we, when we're turning to things. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And who was that Elohim? Isaiah 42, 5, out of his own mouth. Thus said the El, Yahweh, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. I, Yahweh, have called you in righteousness and I take hold of your hand and guard you and give you for a covenant to a, a people, for a light to the Gentiles to open blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am Yahweh. That is my name and my esteem. I do not give to another, nor my praise to idols. Yahweh bless you and guard you. Yahweh make his face to shine upon you and show favor to you. Yahweh lift up his face upon you and give you his complete contentment. Hey, hey, and he can make a way. Hey, hey. Humble yourself and pray and guard his Torah.